Hello again. It was pretty clear to me after the month we've had that my focus for this month, my book of the month, would be a book that I've had for a while. But um, it's all about, well, there's a lot of books around about bees these days. Uh, you can certainly find plenty of bee books on how to keep bees and different better ways to keep bees. Um, there's lovely books like The Barefoot Beekeeper that explains things like top bar hives and so on. But this particular book I came across a few years ago was recommended to me, as many of my favourite books have been. And um, it's this one. It's called The Buzz About Bees. And it's by, I would imagine, Jürgen Tortz. And um, perhaps the, the cover immediately gives you some sense of what to expect. So a lot of bees are a lot of books about bees are to do with how to look after bees and this book is very much about how do bees live you know what do they do and it's a fantastic thorough scientific investigation of how bees live their lives the kind of things they get up to what goes on in the hive and for me it gave an incredibly greater appreciation of what bees are how they live what they do and uh, the photography, as you might guess from this cover picture, is absolutely astonishing. So um, it's a German book. It's a little bit, I suppose, in the realms of an academic book. So it's not a cheap one. But I think if you know somebody who keeps bees or loves bees, this will be absolutely a fantastic book, assuming that they haven't already got it, of course, because they may well say, yes, what an amazing book. There are a couple of books, I think, with this title. Um, I did come across another one, but this is the one that I'm obviously very excited about just astonishing images and what it does is it explains how bees live as a colony um, and how this idea of the super organism so a super organism is where each individual behaves like cells in a an organism like ourselves so the bees behave like individual cells but and they have the ability obviously to go off and do things separately and then come back together again which is a really helpful behavior because in a sense it allows them to um, when they need to stay safe or to contain themselves because you know food is short so they can cluster together but when it's safe and there's lots to to find they can go off and forage around and about and of course by spreading themselves out then those who find food can come back and tell others and so on and in a sense the the waggle dance that we hear about inside the hive is very much like the way um, ants communicate with pheromones to communicate. There's this what's called an emergent behaviour of the organism as a whole, the colony, and that the wisdom of the colony lives on beyond the life of the individual in the same way that I and the rest of us uh, watching this now, or all of you, um, you are something that lives on beyond the life of your individual cells. So the life of a lifespan of a worker bee is about six weeks, apparently. Um, oh, there's another of those amazing photographs. And, uh, and during that time, the bee does different jobs. It um, goes from one job to the next within the hive and then eventually becomes, um, goes out to forage and collect food and so on. So it explains the different roles within the hive, what queens do, what drones are, uh, the workers and so on, the way they work with the cells and the fact that um, the queen will lay different kinds of eggs. So the queen is able to retain the sperm from the drones that um, um, she mates with when on her maiden flight and she can keep that for years in her body so that when she's laying eggs she knows whether to fertilize them or not to either produce a worker or a drone which are different genders and she does that on the basis of how big the cells are so she measures the cell with her mandibles I think and uh, and then lays the right kind of egg in there so to, because obviously drones get bigger So, yes, yeah, what's to say? I mean, it's just a fascinating book. It's full of amazing pictures. It explains how bees are able to navigate uh, using the sun, but also taking into account the fact that the sun moves. Um, 
the fact that bees, when they're moving quickly, they can only see in black and white because their brains are too small. They don't have the capacity to see in colour at speed. But when they slow down, they can then see the colour of flowers and they will say that they see UV. Um, they see different frequencies of light. So they see flowers in a different way to us. Um, just photographs. It's just the photographs <laughs> are the most astonishing thing about this book. And so uh, there we are. This is all about the waggle dance and how they navigate. And well, how they still navigate. Mm -hmm. Lots of pictures as well as fascinating text. Um, yeah, that's the queen that's been marked. How they emerge from their cells. Oh yes, and that they, one of the lovely things, one of the things that fascinates me is how they create their own plumb line. So in order to create what's called bee spacing between their combs, so when they naturally build comb, rather than being forced into combs that are fixed into a frame in a beehive, they, they build the comb, but they need enough space. They want enough crawl space for bees to get between the combs, which is called bee space. And so in order to create that space accurately, they make sure that each comb is vertical. And they build vertical combs by essentially a whole collection of you know, a bunch of bees chain themselves together and hang down like this <laughs> acting as a plumb line so that the bees building the comb can see exactly where is vertical to me it's just astonishing um, god bees dealing with intruders and so on and so forth and that actually some bees will bribe um, the guard bees of another colony with some pollen to <laughs> let them in so perhaps a bit like uh, human society in that respect. And it's just one of those fascinating books. I think I've probably said enough. Bees, we know they're important. Um, they're very busy at the moment. Comfrey is a fantastic flower for bumblebees. This is uh, primarily focused on honeybees, but um, it essentially describes the super organism of all bees that live in community and uh, just like to recommend this as a fascinating read. Um, yes, lovely book, loads of photos, really fascinating.